guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Cross! Last time, we decided to let Pierre guide us into Viper Manor, and, well, hijinks ensued because he's Pierre. This time, I've gone back to my previous save file, which, remember, always keep that save file before choosing who is le leading you into Viper Manor. This time, we're gonna go for Nikki's path. Um, in this case, if this is the only path you're doing, I recommend letting Kid come with you. However, for the variety, I'm going to choose to not let her come with me because, well, it adds a little bit of different dialogue and some variations on some scenes later on, so I would like to show that off. Now, don't worry about not being able to recruit Kid. There is still another opportunity to recruit Kid. Only clues are the occasional, uh, Acacia Dragoon mob and their leader, that Viper Book. Okay. Gotta start with the manor, huh? No, this time I think I'm gonna refuse. So that's how you're gonna be, eh? Rest your life in the shadows as a dead man's ghost. Because I pity you, I'm going to give you this, just in case. And regardless of whether you recruit her or not, she gives you the teleporter. Now, if you recruited her back at uh, Cape Howell, I believe you would have gotten the teleporter at that point. Uh, not that it really matters, because at that point you would only have two characters. But uh, I don't ever want to see that face years again. <laughs> okay then, Kit was not happy about being refused. Keep that in mind for later. Now, if you're going to go this route that I'm going to do this time, which is uh, Nikki's path, you need to start, instead of by talking to Pierre, we don't need to do that this time, but we do need to go onto the ship up here. Now, I talked to everybody the first time that we were here because I wanted to just give you the lay of the land. Uh, she's not in this room. I always forget which room she's in. We gotta go up here. Does the scene happen when I go talk to the twins? I didn't see Mickey in here earlier. Now, if I remember correctly, I believe that Mickey is supposed to be here. Yeah, so he hasn't been around lately, and he's been missing. Supposed to be searching, but... Oh, okay, there we go. I couldn't remember who I was supposed to talk to. So Mickey, as you can see, the uh, the twins and Mickey have something in common. They're, uh, they're all dancers, and they all dress very similarly. That's actually a really good interpretation of the original drawing for Mickey. It's very similar. Hmm. Was able to track him till we went into the Shadow Forest. But there were knights guarding the entrance and you couldn't get in. Don't blame you. Supposed to be a way into Viper's Manor at the end of the forest. Hmm. Now, if you remember a couple episodes back, we talked to a few different people that said something about different ways of getting into Viper Manor. One of them was through somewhere that we saw, like a hole or a tree or some such thing in the Shadow Forest. So that is currently our objective. You'll lure the knights away from the entrance, and then you can get into the forest and find Nikki. Rock on. Sure, why not? Alright, so we've initiated the quest over here. Next thing is to head back and dismantle the Profiteer's purse and get equipment. But before we get there, there is one other thing I would like to uh, correct. Um, I rechecked uh, my notes there and I still didn't find it, so I had to look it back up online. Apparently the value is between 40 and 60 G, so... 50, 55, 45, whatever, just 
between 40 and 60, so it, it doesn't really matter. The idea is to lower it to in that range and that will get the uh, desired result. Now here, after starting the uh, whole sequence there where you choose someone to go with you, you can talk to this guy and he'll be have his booth all set up and he draws a portrait. And since we don't get a, a lot of opportunity to look at Surge, I figured I'd get uh, them to draw his portrait there. We met the, uh, the Richie over there. Stuck up now. Used to Him and I used to study art together. It's the best of us all. Since his beloved wife died, it's been all about money. Completely changed. It's a pity he used the skills to make money out of counterfeit paintings. Okay then. So yeah, a little more uh, background lore there. Figured I'd show that off before we go over here and uh, get some weapons. Now on this path, we don't have, or at least the way I'm showing it off here, we don't have kit. So we still want to get rid of the uh, Profiteer's Purse. That's the wrong one. And when we do, we want to get different weapons this time. We want to get weapons for Surge, obviously. We also want to get uh, weapons for the two characters that will be going along with us. Since we don't have Kid, and as far as stats go, she's probably the, the best, aside from Surge, that we have access to right now, we're going to have to choose someone else. I'm going to choose Poshul because she can actually hurt things, and she'll actually be useful in some of the boss fights, uh, kind of as a tank, so we will uh, get an Iron Glove for you. And then we will get an Iron Pick, which is a weapon for Nikki. And we, uh, well, we don't have him yet, but spoiler, we're going to get him. It's not a spoiler that we're going to recruit lots of characters in this game. Uh, we're just going to get a lot of them. Uh, also, since we have the extra one, uh, we want to forge a copper helmet, or a bronze helmet in the original version. And the reason for this is we are going to be short one because we don't have that same fight against the Acacia uh, Sergeants in order to steal a copper helmet from them. And I'm out of mine. Um, can I sell? I'm using all of those. Um, I should, yeah, I guess I'll have to sell that one. Not like I'm going to use it anyway. Um, was that enough? Uh, all the iron stuff. Is that enough for the helmet? It was! Perfect! What? Oh, I'm missing the screw. And as I showed before, the element trader is just over here, and you can get the screw that you need just by selling excess uh, elements that you don't need. In my case, I'm going to use the, uh, the brace, uh, antidotes, uh, medicines, and ointments, because they're the best bang for your buck when it comes to trying to do this. Now, I'm specifically holding on to a few more antidotes because they'll actually be useful uh, going forward, and I'll probably need a handful of them. Uh, the other ones rarely get used anyway, but uh, anyway, there's the screw. Now, I also could have disassembled an existing um, helmet if I had bothered to unequip. Actually, I could have just gone right in here. I could have just uh, gone here and gone to disassemble it, and I would have gotten an extra screw that way as well. But uh, yeah, it doesn't... Uh, either way, I just figured I'd show you both options. So let's go and forge a copper helmet. Don't worry about getting the, uh, the iron vest or copper mails or anything like that. Though you could get the copper mails if you had enough money. Um, I've spent too much of the money that I have, so I can't afford them. But the uh, the one uh, that, or the one helmet there isn't a big deal, so I figured I'd pick that up. Anyway, with that being said, we were supposed to go over to Shadow Forest in order to continue. I'm gonna reset up my elements. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, Lena for now. Uh, just because I have uh, her with me already and she's already mostly set up, but uh, eventually we will want someone else. But I'm going to just set up real quick. 
All right, I equipped my gear and modified my elements a little bit. I removed all the tablets, uh, so we don't need to worry about that. Oddly enough, she distracts the guards that were here, but there's no real scene to depict anything about it. All right, we've got our first new enemy here. We have a basic bulb. These are generic, boring enemies that there isn't particularly anything interesting to say about. But they're here. Uh, I believe they can poison you, actually. Uh, though I don't remember 100% for sure. You can take them out uh, with a basic barrage from Surge. As well as a dash and slash. So that's pretty simple. They're green elemental, so uh, potion or any type of uh, yellow element could be fun. I'll try and show off uh, Poshul's, uh attack here. Her, uh, her level 3 tech. Right. Ooh, I didn't have that listed. A rare drop. I probably have that listed later on. A rare drop. I will take that. Bushwhacker is a level one. Arrow Saucer is a level two. Bush Basher is a level three. That is going to be a powerful element. Uh, it's going to do more than Arrow Saucer will, so I'll just throw that there. Uh, there's nothing we can do with uh, that thing, though it does make a sound. Which is kind of weird, but okay. So I guess they have a rare drop that is uh, that. I'm going to clear out all of the uh, enemies on the screen, since there's a whole bunch of them, after we watch a cutscene. Is that copyrighted? Can I put that in there? Too bad I tried it anyway. And if it doesn't come through, that means it got copyrighted and I take it out. Yeah, nice uh, Guns N' Roses uh, reference there. I'll take it. Well, he does something that we don't get to do. He can jump. So I'm going to clear out all the, the bulbs around here. This doesn't do anything, but I'll uh, take care of them, and I will see you in a moment. Okay, I'll show you a uh, canine ball here, since I had the opportunity to do so. Eh, it's fine. It's nothing special. Mainly because we don't use potion long-term in this game, but... More little stat-ups. Okay, we're back. Let's just uh, pop up here and grab an arrow saucer, which I just got the uh, lucky drop for a better version. Uh, as you notice there with Lena, she got kind of trapped behind. I mean, I was gonna figure out why I was <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you can get, your characters can get kind of dislodged because they follow your exact path and it's kind of weird that way. All right, so that's an uplift element. That's also, or that's a yellow element. But yeah, because the character, the uh, your party members follow the exact same path, they end up uh, kind of weird in places for how their pathing works. Demons, they look interesting. That's for sure. Can't fend them off alone. Fine, I guess I'll save them. I don't know if this counts as a boss fight or not. Now, the reason why I recommended uh, bringing Kit along, or one of many reasons, if this is your only path and you're not going after all the characters, is these guys. Or, no, sorry, I misread that. But there are a bunch of items that she can steal. This doesn't happen to be one of them, but I can't read, and apparently ivory is iron in my brain, so, you know. Um, never mind. Don't mind me. Um, I don't think there's any such thing as row in this game, so you don't need to worry about them. These guys have around 100 HP. Uh, they don't drop anything spectacular. 
I miss anyway, so it doesn't matter. All right. So Magma Bomb, even though it's not their, uh, something they're weak to, because that will deal damage to all three of them there. And then have Potial target a different... Actually, you know, we're going to have Lena target a different one, because I want... Uh, I want to use her element power here to do more damage. And she should be able to finish off those other two, and then Potial could finish off the one that's left. There we go. No, Potial's turn. You can deal the final blow. There we go. Yeah, nothing particularly special about that fight. However, it is, for some reason, a star level. Because there are so many different split paths you can do in this game, there are a lot of really weird star level boss fights that are quote-unquote boss fights because you get a star level, but it's not really all that important. Now, one of the things you could do is you could have run back with your party and fought a couple of battles in uh, one of the previous areas so that you would have gotten that mini star up. Sometimes that mini star up just doesn't happen. I'm not 100% sure if it happens in this particular uh, instance or not, but some levels they just incorporated it into it because with some of the levels, no matter what path you take, there's not a lot of opportunity to fight battles in between. Uh, sometimes you're forced into going straight from one boss fight into another, so there's never a mini star level in between in the first place. As you can see, uh, because I loaded from the same file, the previous episode where we had Surge level up, this is exactly the same stats that we got in that, uh, that sequence as well, because it started from the same file and these were determined when he last leveled up. Poshul got much better stat ups, as did Lena. And we got nothing but uplift elements, the common drop. That's fine. Did you just ignore me and walk into water? Uh huh. Hello. Oh. Is it asleep? We can't get through. I skipped through the first part of the dialogue. What is it? Okay, I didn't miss much. Well, let's follow him into water, apparently. Okay. The least you could do is thank us. I, I have trouble reading Poshul's dialogue because of the lisp. Off to Viper Manor. Why? Yeah, who are you? poster of you. I see. I have trouble. It takes me like four times reading through her dialogue half the time to figure out what the hell she's saying. What business do you have in Viper Manor? You believe your sister is there. Is this time for a Star Wars clip? I don't know. We'll see. Let you in on a secret if you let me join your party. Well, they've already uh, named him there, if you noticed. This is Nikki. Sure, we'll let you so, uh, come along here. Rocket. Yeah, he is a rock star. Joined your band. Yeah, their uh, accent stuff. Wait, I, I can't let him sing for me? Doesn't matter what uh, choice I make. Rude. But I want to hear him sing. It's a PS1 game. I'm sure it'll be fine. PS1 has a uh, great, uh, you know, great uh, track record when it comes to voice acting in those games. The, what, handful of them that ever had voice acting that early on? Go through the water vein further up. 
There's a monster block in the way. Got to feed it one of the monsters in the forest. You found this notebook. That's the uh, flashing thing that looks really weird on the ground. I'm not exactly sure how that's supposed to be a notebook unless it's fluttering in a breeze that I can't see and somehow got into this cave that's isolated by water. Uh, lure the monster out with their favorite food. Okay. Plant life growing in the forest. The plants are attracted to certain aroma. Uh, emit their pollen. Okay. Full of three monsters in all. We've, uh, I think we've seen two of them. Did we see all three? Yeah, we did. Okay. Uh, each has preference in food. Mm hmm. Now for a song. But, hey, wait for me. It didn't even give me a chance to put him in my party. Oh, there we go. Confirm him, and we're going to replace Lena with him strictly because, like, his stats are obviously worse than Lena's in almost every way. But uh, they're both blue. Don't know 100% if Nikki's required, but it has additional dialogue, so I'm going to bring Nikki. All right, and with that being said, the most irritating part about uh, the game, there's his uh, thing there, and uh, let's go grab some stuff off of Lena. The most irritating part of this game for me is swapping equipment around and swapping elements. Sadly, there is no way of just dropping the elements from one character onto another, so you have to go and remove all of the elements from one character, and then allocate them onto a new character. Triangle button, go attack first so we can see what kind of spells we're dealing with. Uh, let's throw an Ice Lance up there. Actually, you know what, let's uh, put the Bush Basher up there. And Ice Lance on level 2. And Electro Jolt, I guess it's going down here. Okay, that's fine. Cure and a heal. Pretty pretty basic setup. There's not a whole lot uh, to it at the moment. But yeah, you have to re-equip everyone each time. I'm going to do this almost 99% off screen because it's tedious. It takes time and I don't even know half the elements I want to equip half the time. Uh, so I'm going to... Oh, I gotta go back in there. I'm stupid. Forgot something. Yeah, in order to proceed, you need to go back and get that treasure chest. So, let's go get it. This contains the aroma pouch. It's an old notebook. In order to wake up the monster blocking the path, use the aroma pouch and check all the plant life. Some of the plants will be attracted to the aroma. These are the monsters in the forest that eat the pollen given off by the plants. Use the pollen to lure the monsters to the monster blocking the path. And then once you wake it up, all you have to do is defeat it. Uh, oh, so you figured all this out, wrote down the instructions, got defeated, and then I guess dragged your ass in here to write the notebook. Eh. Mixed among the pile of bones is one bone different from rest found an angry scapula you'll notice whenever we find pieces of skelly since that's his little quest here is we find uh, they all have kind of an emotion associated or some some kind of an adjective the heavy skull the angry scapula angry at myself for having no talent hmm well let's get going All right, what else do we have here? We got that. Now, there are different... These things here where are all individual things that will cause pollen to fall. Uh, that one up there, I'm not going to go to. Um, the, uh, that, uh, the first one we did was green. That one down there on the right is blue. This one is red. 
Each of them will attract a one of those monsters we saw earlier. And only the one of the right color is going to work. I'm gonna have to clear out the enemies on the screen again. Okay, another rare bush basher, I'll take it. Hopefully that's a good sign of things to come. Uh, so he's up there, I don't need to worry about that. The, uh, each of these colored doodads will only attract the one that is the same color as it. And what you have to do is you have to drag it along because if it, you leave it too long, it will eat the uh, pollen that you've grabbed. But you don't want it to fall too far behind because if it falls too far behind, it will get disinterested and it won't follow you. The only time that's really a problem is right here. Because here, it cuts the corner a little bit. Yeah, see it's starting to uh, get distracted here. You gonna follow it? He's, uh, yeah, he's trying to follow it, but it's kind of getting stuck. Come back here. Yeah, see, he's eaten it, and now he's just going to go wherever he wants. So I'm going to go back and get him all over again because he gets stuck there sometimes, and there's just really nothing you can do. Kind of a pain in the ass. Okay, I went to go and figure this out, but he's still roaming around down here. He didn't go back to where he was supposed to go before. Um, oh, you know what I can probably do? <laughs> I thought you just went to go back and get them, but when I was doing my test run, I was using an emulator, so I just reloaded a save state and went from there. But uh, let's, uh, let's try and get this guy to come back here. No, no, no. Seriously, stop eating the stupid things. What's wrong with you? Oh, uh, I don't know why it's so tedious for me. I don't know anyone else who has this many problems doing this, but I do for some reason. Get your ass back here. Um, video game. You gonna? No, no. <laughs> Seriously? Are you? You? This game's got to be kidding me. Why is he stuck there? I can't get it. <laughs> I can't get him to not just eat the damn thing right away. It's because it trails so far behind. It's almost like another party member. Am I just gonna have to wait here? Come on, chase it. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that should not have taken so long. <laughs> All right, he ate it. Now he's awake. Now we can fight him and we can get it. Um, hello? What? What's with your dialogue? <laughs> we get the skull duggery frame, one of the rare, actually somewhat interesting looking designs, mainly just because the skulls in the top corners look pretty cool. The rest of it's meh, but uh, those other skulls look all right. I'm not still going to put it on. Now, if you give it either the blue, uh, the blue monster, the green monster, you have to fight him. Uh, you don't get a star level, so you're not missing out on anything by skipping it. But yeah, you get to fight him. He has a bush basher rare drop. Uh, you can steal a rare bat eye element, which is an element you don't have access to right now. It's not very good, so don't worry about it. Yeah, it's not too difficult of a fight from what I know. I think he's got about 200 HP. He should fall down within two rounds, quite honest. But uh, I haven't fought him in a while, so I'm not sure. Anyway, did we get all the items in here? Uh, one, two, and the three, four in here. Yeah, we got the items in there. Perfect. Ooh, another item. Okay, let's go get that. Oh, I get that's that's why I couldn't go get the treasure. Hello, this path leads to Viper Manor. Oh, apparently they know about the path leading to Viper Manor. 
you can't let me through. Uh, this guy speaks in all caps, apparently. Is this guy going to be as much of a joke as Ketchup? I am Zoa, one of the four Davis and the Acacia Dragoons. Oh, so he's on Karsh's level. Poor Surge, this should be interesting. I shall let you pass if you are able to defeat me. Okay. Interesting. Now, we have a new fight and a different tutorial fight from the one we had with Ketchup, which wasn't much of a tutorial fight. It's them again. Shaking the awesome element with you. Okay. A summoning element. Here I go. The Golem Summon. Was it just what? It's Golem, I guess, like Final Fantasy, so it's just a shield for him? It's still odd that we didn't see anything. What did you forget? You can't use a summoning element until all the field attributes are the same color, so it has to all be yellow, otherwise you can't use the yellow summoning element. If you had a green summoning element, it would have to be all green before you could use it. Yeah... Turn the field effect attributes the same color and try again. You can't use the same element twice in the same battle. No, apparently not. And this guy who talks in all caps has nothing. <laughs> okay, are you getting all finished with your comedy act yet? Can that be, for those of you who played the game, can that be considered foreshadowing? I don't know if it can. Interesting nonetheless. All right, first things first, we have Salt, Pepper, and Zoa. If you happen to have brought a uh, kid with you, you will be able to steal something. What can you steal? Uh, you can steal a rare turn black element, not that we really need that. Uh, from Salt, you can steal a knee pad as a common steal from Zoa and as a rare steal from Pepper. His common steal is a tablet, which is garbage. Uh, so yeah, don't worry too much about that. We're just gonna have Surge attack. Uh, my strategy for this fight is basically the Karsh fight all over again. Attack uh, Zoa. He also has a Dragon Rider ability, but he will use it every third turn instead of just once the uh, two clowns are gone. So we're going to focus on finishing him first. That's why I went to the menu, so I could load up some Bush Bashers. However, um, the field effect determines how much damage you do with an element. The more yellow, the opposite color of green that's on the field, the less damage you'll be able to do with a green element. Now, the difference in this case isn't going to be substantial, so I'm just going to use it because it I'm going to do enough damage with it to nuke this guy. If you don't have Bush Basher, use uh, Arrow Saucer. Here's Nikki, so let's have uh, Nikki try and uh, finish things off here. We'll see what he can do. He is a musician, so of course he does everything with his, uh, with his guitar, hence why our weapon for him, for some reason, is a pick. Like, I understand it works with the, uh, the theme, but it's still kind of dumb as a weapon. And instead of doing uh, Bushwhacker plus two here, I'm gonna go for Magma Bomb, or Magma Bomb, to try and deal some additional damage to everything out. As soon as he casts an element, he kind of rocks out, which is pretty cool. I kind of like that. All right, and now we'll have uh, Potion go on. Pepor does more damage. Salt does more uh, healing stuff. So try and focus in on him first because he's gonna strengthen, and then he's gonna try and deal some big damage. Yeah, here's Eagle Eye. Eagle Eye is a fantastic element when we finally get access to it. In this case, it does almost nothing because his accuracy is already damn near. <laughs> now here is a dual tech. They actually do have dual techs in this game and they can hurt, so be careful. Uh, we're gonna use Arrow Saucer to try and finish you off here even though your magic stat is terrible, but it's already sagging, so there we go. And now we'll finish off Salt there. 
Well, I guess I don't get a chance. I was going to try and use uh, Nikki's uh, tech to show off in that fight. I, I guess not. And we got uh, another star level. Uh, that's sad. That's two levels in a row he's got nothing but defense. Well, what can you do? Uh, as far as drops go, uh, the only rare drop we got there was the copper. And that's a rare drop from either Solt or Pepor. The rare drop uh, from Zoa is a bronze glove. Not that we need it because we have iron. I shall let you pass. We shall meet again. And here we get a heal element. Nice. Now I'm going to pop back in here, and I never really mentioned it the first time around when we got in here, because there were so many other things to talk about. The music in this area is phenomenal. It's it's ethereal with the, the voice in the background. It's calming, yet mysterious. just absolutely love this song. One of my favorite songs, honestly, from the entire soundtrack. And this is a soundtrack full of my favorite song every time I see it, so. All right, a new enemy here. This is uh, Garaday, I believe how you pronounce it. Has a rare steal. Again, if you brought Kid, you would have wanted to attempt to steal a antiviral cap from these guys. It's a rare steal, so it's not particularly common. But if you steal something and you don't like the item you got or you fail to steal, you can run away and reinitiate the fight and try and steal again. You don't keep the items you steal, but if you keep going into the battle over and over and over again until you get the item you want, then you will eventually get, um, you know, the, the rare item that you're looking for and you can use it there. And then as long as you finish the fight after getting it, like in the same fight, then you should be fine. All right, Magma Bomb, since they're uh, blue elemental and they're to uh, red. All right, let's get uh, Nikki in here and we'll try to use his uh, tech. Element, grand finale. And in all his wrestling glory, he decides to break a guitar over somebody's head. Jeff Jarrett would be proud. All right. Now, the more important fights in here. Let's just grab uh, another Magma Bomb element. If you didn't want to, you didn't have to buy all of the ones that, uh, that I got. But I figured I'd just get all of them because it was easy. Right, that should be the last item in here. Now, these guys, uh, there's another one of those. Now, if these guys are over top of you, they will often drop on you and you'll be able to initiate combat with them just like that. These are Gloop. These guys have a rare drop, so I would recommend fighting all of them that you can in here because their drop, um, comparable to the antiviral cap, is called a Pultice cap. And a Pultice cap like the antiviral cap uh, alternative that you could have gotten from the Garadave by stealing. Yeah, basically, they each do very similar things. They will... Not getting so many turns. They each protect against status effects of a particular element. The antiviral protects against uh, any green elemental... Uh, green elemental status effects, and the Pultice Cap, I believe, protects you against fire or uh, red elemental status effects, I think. We will find out because I'm hoping to, uh, hoping to get one. Probably not, it is a rare drop, but I have gotten a couple of those so far. 
I'm hoping to get a few rare drops over the course of the game. Not too many, but a few of them. It would be nice anyway. Alright, I ran into the other one there too. No luck. No rare drop for me. However, there is another screen here. Alright, and after that battle, it looks like Surge's next level up is going to be much better than his last one. Potions as well. And Nikki at least got strength. Though, Nikki's kind of more of a mage than a, uh, than a physical fighter, but okay, that's fine. I'll take it. Alright, now, you can kind of see in the water there, the current there is going pretty fast. You can't possibly, at least I don't think you can possibly dodge all those guys, and it's an infinite stream of them. So, as you can see, yeah, they're all popping out of here. So we need to do something about that. We need to push this rock. But there's something standing in front of it. This is a wraith. Um, I don't have any notes about this guy in particular. I don't think it dropped anything of value, but it is a uh, black elemental, our first black elemental uh, enemy here. And, uh, well, Surge kind of beats up on it because he's white, which is the opposite elemental color. And we have Dash and Slash, which does huge damage to everything because he's got a high strength stat. Now, the way elements work is there's two different formulas for how the damage is calculated. There's one for uh, magical spells, and then there's one for... Uh, let's see here. Oh, we got a, another element slot. I'll have to put stuff there later. Uh, there's one for magical type spells, and then there's one for what is known as weapon-based skills. So not all techs are ma uh, just weapon-based, but in this case, dash and slash is. So it uses a different formula in order to determine the damage, and it relies a lot more on his strength stat, I think, than his magic stat. So this basically scales the entire game with him, which is why it's his best tech in the game. Um, I don't know if that's magic based or not. Uh, this one here, I would guess, is physically based as well because he does use his guitar, which is his weapon. But it, it's hard to know which ones are which. It's usually somewhat obvious, kind of like I was mentioning there. Yeah, so you can push this, you push this rock into block them off, and then you'll be able to get up here without uh, worrying about it. Fast forward, because that takes too long. And make her way up here. And there's more of those dudes. And this gloop always falls on you. Uh, you can avoid it if you go around properly. I just never I, I usually try and fight them because i want to fight the gloops uh in hopes of getting a uh, full piece gap. if there's only two enemies your best bet in most fights is to just attack like i showed you there with surge and then dash and slash the other one and with the vast majority of enemies right now if you can run into two of them he's gonna be able to kill them that way ran right into another one right after oh there's another one there I didn't even know that one was there. Yeah, I ran into that Garrida that was popping onto the uh, onto the screen uh, right as I ran into battle against the last group. But uh, yeah, that's... I didn't know there was a second uh, fall point for the gloops. I'll take it. Another opportunity for pull these caps, I'll take it. But yeah, most of the battles, as I was saying, they're not super interesting early on, though that's the case in a lot of games. There's not really a lot of strategy you can do other than just attack. Though I do have to admit that compared to, you know, my first playthrough when I was like 10 or 12, I definitely have a lot less problems with the game uh, knowing how to play a video game in general than I did the first time. That treasure chest with the enemy on it you cannot get access to uh, at this point in time. The bottom of a well. Viper Manor is above. Here we're going to wait for nightfall. And we will again see this cutscene. And it's like a lot of the... I don't think they've done anything to modify the videos. They're still as low res as before. 
they seem maybe a little less blocky. I'm not sure if that's just a slight filter or what it is, but uh, they're, they're definitely a very low resolution. Now I'll show you how to get all of the items around here on the third and final path. But for now, we're just gonna hold off, go up here. And just like we did before, we're gonna sneak right in here. And this time I actually am going to save at the save point. By the way, you can hit triangle to go into the menu or you can just hit the X button. Oh, does that, oh, that opens up the menu. That's weird. But anyway, we're going to save over a third one. Good, that didn't nuke my file. I was wondering if it would just save over the same one, but no, it did not. That would suck because I'd have to restart. <laughs> but yeah, make a, a whole new file. We want to keep the uh, before choosing a, uh, a guide, uh, a peer file, and now a Nikki file. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to show the final path and then I will mostly show that play, uh, the entirety of Viper Manor from that perspective, save for I'll be splicing in different scenes from Nikki's path. So I'm not just showing you the same dungeon twice because there's no point in showing that, but I'll just go around and we'll explore and talk to everyone and figure out how we're supposed to get in and what we're supposed to do when we get there and all that good stuff. Also, Yes, we're going to do this. No, I'm not looking for it. Though I do have the uh, time shifter now, so it can kind of be easier. Uh, but I will endeavor to show this off without, uh, without the cheese method. But anyway, that's all for this one. And I'll see you guys next time.